All right, in this video, what we're going to do is go over the steps of using the multi-group ester synchronization planner. Now, if you looked at the previous video, that goes over the steps of downloading it. So if you don't know how to download it, just refer back to that. But I said, once you download it and if you follow the steps I did, I created this folder. And in this folder, I, I placed that, that file. Now, if you did downloaded the original version, you'll get this. If you download the multi-group, you'll get this. Okay, a little bit different name. All right. Now to run the program, just select it, and then well, you can go with your mouse button. And I just right-clicked here, and then I select open, or you could double-click it, or you could select it and just hit enter. Either any of these ways will open the program. Okay, now with this multi-group planner, notice you need Excel. It's going to use Excel as a screen to view things with, but it it um, also requires a Windows machine. So if you have a Mac, you're kind of out of luck unless you set up the virtual window in that Mac, okay? And then load Excel into that. All right, but otherwise, if everything's going well, <clears throat> when you open the program, you should see this, okay? And this, if you look here at the bottom, it's the program tab. And it really doesn't tell you a whole lot other than a couple steps to consider before running the program, some support, information in case you got questions you can call me or email me okay or else you can do the same with dr johnson at k-state all right and let's say so that's really all you got to worry about on this page if you go back to the bottom here the tab that says planner worksheet that's where you want to go first all right now notice there's some scroll bars here on the side so be sure you got things in place you got another scroll bar here so just kind of for your information it's all there Right, so the first thing you want to do when you start the program for the first time is select new producer. All right, you should see that. And you can type your name in here. If you do sync protocols for other people, you could set up each person as a, or each ranch or each farm as a producer. Once you do that, take your mouse and just click below so it lets the program know that you're all done typing. Okay. And then hit the button that says Save Producer. All right. If you did it right, you should see the name show up down here. All right. Now, if it doesn't do that, that means you got to do some other things to your program to make it work. All right. Now, to do that, what you want to do is go up to your File, then select Options here on the side menu. And then in the box that shows up here, you want to select your Trust Center and select Trust Center Settings. Then select Macro Settings. And be sure that you have this checkbox here checked and this Enable button enabled. Then hit OK. All right. The next thing you might want to do if it still doesn't work is go to the deal where it says add-ins on the side menu here okay and then at the bottom in the button it says go select that and be sure you have these checks in place then hit OK All right, you just need to do that once then it's saved forever All right. so I say if everything's working you should be able to make your buttons work you should get your drop down menu and away you go now, if there's other producers that you're doing for, you'd select new producer again, type in the other producer, whatever, we'll call him Bob, for instance, hit save, and then he'll put that one on your list, okay? So then whenever you come to the program, from this point forward, you'd select your producer, and then you'd work with that, and set up his protocols, okay? And if you want to view them later, you'd come back here, view them. Delete takes the producer out and all his protocols. Clear fields just clears the screen. It doesn't delete anything. It just clears it out so you can put, do another system. All right. So I have my producer set. I selected me. Now I'm going to put in my protocols. All right. So the protocols are right here. And the first thing I want to do is hit the button that says set up new protocol. And then I can indicate my breeding group. So let's say it's my my four-year-old cows, okay, four-year cows, I'm going to call them, okay, 
Next I ask for the number of head in my group and I have 25 in this bunch. Okay, the breed type, notice there's two big classifications here. Got to learn a little Latin here. But the Boss Taurus, these would be our traditional beef cattle, you know, like your Herefords, Angus, Simmentals, European descent primarily. The Boss Indicus ones here, these are the ones that have some Brahma influence, some of our South American cattle, the ones with the hump and the big ears. Okay, so I have an Angus herd. Someone just put in one for Boss Taurus. Now the system type. Notice there's three big types, and under each type there's a number of different protocols we could use. So if I want to do a fixed timed AI system, I want to put a three there. And as soon as I do that, if you scroll down just a little bit here, you'll notice there's two lists. One that gives me the fixed timed AI cow protocols. So these would be for my cows. There's some preferred systems, and then there's some less preferred systems. And generally, the less preferred systems are because they take more labor to accomplish. They may be a little more expensive to do. They may not have quite the results as these other ones. Okay, so they're less preferred. So there's preferred, less preferred cows. And then with heifers, same thing. Here's the preferred heifer systems, and here's the less preferred heifer systems. Now notice there's a number here, so 22, 29, 10, 13, 35, and that's how we identify the protocol we'll use. So in this situation, I want to use protocol 22, which is a seven-day co-sync seeder and uh, has fixed time to AI 63 hours after the PG shot. Okay. The date to start breeding. Oops, I put a 22 there. There we go, fix that problem. And I want to start breeding these cows on July 1st, 2019. Okay, notice the program will format it into this format. I just put in 7 slash 1 slash 19 and it formatted it for me. The time of day that I want to breed. So if I want to breed at 10 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the afternoon, I would just indicate that now. Now for me, I like to breed in, in the evening, so I'm going to go at 6 p.m. A little cooler then. Notice then I put a space after the 6 p.m. or the 6 o'clock, and then I put the p.m. Notice there's a space there. If you don't have a space, you'll get an error. error. If you don't put any a.m. p.m. designation, it's automatically going to default to a.m. Okay, next is our GNRH shot, and I'm going to go with I use Sister Ellen in this case. Use whatever you like. They all work good. And, uh, and then for my PG shot, I'm gonna, I have Blue Lace. I'll just use that. But you can use these are all good products to use. Okay. The days from the last AI to bull turn in. So generally about two weeks later, I chase the bull in. So I'll put that 14 there. So 14 days later. And then my early pregnancy check date. The program will give you 30 days, 31 days. Okay, so it suggests July 31st, 2019. Well, I don't get a hold of these calls till the snow starts to fly in the fall and winter. So I'll probably be preg checking these in December. So I'm just going to put that in there. Or I could leave it blank for now. Okay, now I can put some notes. Okay, so I can indicate the bowl to use. So if I'm using a Angus bull, whatever number he is, there he is, you know. So it just makes a note of what bull I'm using. Okay. And you could use whatever, put whatever note you do want to put there. All right. So, got everything in here. If I wanted to compare other systems to what I'm using, I could type those numbers in here. For instance, if I wanted to look at 29, I could put that in. And then if I'd scroll down below here, what it does is it shows me my system 22 and here's my system 29 it kind of shows me the cost difference of using system 29 versus 22 for my 25 cows okay so that's all that does and there you'll see there's some other stuff on this page as well okay it's, and uh, here would be my cost per conception rate okay, depending on if I get 35, 45, 55, 65, 75 percent per ad. okay so it's all there. All right. So we got all that in. 
And then I'm going to select Save. Okay. Bang. There it is. So my cow protocol is in. Now I got some heifers that I want to breed. AI as well. So I'm going to just type in my heifers. The number ahead in this group. I have 10 of them. They're also Boss Taurus breeding. I'm going to use a fixed time protocol as here as well. Um, so I got a little different list in here. I go through my list here, and for this I'm going to just use System 23. Okay, there it is. All right, date to start breeding. Everybody gets bred about the same time, so I'm going to do it this way. All right, so no Sunday, and then these guys I'll breed in the morning. So these are at 10 o'clock in the morning. There they are. Same drugs as before because that's what I got on hand. And the bull goes in two weeks later. And my preg check date, I can put that in here as well. Okay. All right. Here I can indicate what bull I'm using. And then I will save it. All right. Now, if we want to review what we've done, be sure you have the name selected. And so I just hit the one button that says view. Notice it'll bring up my cows. If I hit it again, it'll bring up my heifers. If I hit it again, it'll bring back my cows. It'll just keep cycling through whatever I've saved. Now if there's some other tasks that I want to do as well with the breeding, I can put those in it at this time. So for instance, with my cows, I brought up my cows. I'm viewing them, and I want to put a patch on their back when I breed them. So I'm going to put here patch. Then I can kind of see who got bred and who didn't, maybe by the bull. And the date that I want to put that on, I'm going to just do it the same day I'm breeding. And if I hit save, it'll save that task with these cows. If I want to check, check what I did, I hit the view button. Notice it brings it up. Hit view again, nothing, because that's all that's there. Now if I want to do the same thing with my heifers, I'm going to hit view again here. Bring up my heifers. And these guys I'm going to put a patch on as well. So I'm going to put this. Okay. Whoops. I did it wrong. So here i got to fix it. So I just type right over the top. Then I put in my date. And then I save it. All right. So there it is. I got my heifers in, my cows in. I bring up my cows. I can hit view. I can see I'm doing this. I can bring up my heifers, and I'm also doing the same thing. Now, if I decide I got to do something different, or I got to change any information on here, maybe the date or the time, I can just hit the view button like I did. I can retype the the date. So maybe I want to do this the day before. Okay. Maybe the same time, maybe a different time, and I hit save. Okay. So now. You see my cows are still July 1st, 6 p.m. My heifers I changed to June 30th, 10 a.m. Okay, and then if I want to change my my patching that I did for these guys, I could bring up my patch, and I want to change that. I'll just type over that, and then I'll just hit save, and it'll save right over it. So when I look at it, it'll be there. Okay. So that's all there's to it, all right, as far as this goes. If I wanted to delete this system, I just hit delete. It would take care of it. If I hit delete all producer plans, it'll delete the cow and the heifer, everything under my name. Okay. If I hit delete producer, it'll take out me as a producer and all my protocols. So that's how these buttons work. Okay. So be sure you use them. All right. So I got my protocols in. Next thing I want to do is print out a calendar. So I go to my button at the bottom or tab that says calendar. Select that. It brings up the calendar sheet. Now notice this calendar is pretty wide. Okay, so just beware of that. And I'll select the producer. Oops, there I am. And then what I do is I hit the button that says load calendar. Bam, there it is. Okay, so now we can see our protocols. Notice it'll color code them. So my heifers, it tells me here to 
put in my cedars, two cc's of Sister Ellen. My cows right here, okay. The cedar in. Here I pull my cedar on my heifers. Here I pull the cedar on my cows. The time is here of when that should happen. All right. Then down below here it shows me my heifer protocol, 10 o'clock on the 30th to inject the Sister Ellen fixed 10 day eye heifers patch on the 1st. Same thing for my cows. All right, now what I can do is look over my calendar and I can, at the very bottom, you know, there's, you can print, there's a lot of months here. There's a whole year's worth of stuff, okay? You can see here's some notes on what I'm doing, the number of doses and everything. Okay, so when you print it off, because it's so long, you don't have to print every sheet out. You can just hit print page one and it'll just print off this part of the calendar. If you print off print all, it'll print out every page of the calendar even if there's nothing there. So I say you may want to just use the buttons as you need them. Okay, now as I'm looking at my calendar, I say I can readjust things and uh, do whatever I need. I can type in on these dates as well and add more notes. If I realize, oh, that the 30th is Sunday and I don't want to work on Sunday and I want to just move things back a day to Saturday when I have some help, I can go back into my planner worksheet. I can, you know, I, right here I select view. I bring up my heifers. Okay, here's my cows, here's my heifers. So let's say I just want to back that up a day. Like that. I can just resave it. Okay, so then when I bring up my heifers, now it'll be on Saturday. And then if I want to check out my patching, I want to change that back a day. It's not a hard thing to do. Resave it. Okay, so then I can go back to my calendar. Go back up on top. Select the producer and hit the load button. And what I did is I just backed things up here a little bit to Saturday for my heifers in terms of breeding them and patching them. Okay. And I gave myself Sunday off. All right, so that's pretty much how you'd use the program, and I think that's the heart of it. There's a few more tabs here at the bottom. One says supplies, and they say if you want, you can print this off. It'll show you how many doses of the drugs that I've selected, okay, the cedars that I need, and uh, if there's anything else, I can type it in here. I can put in my costs and stuff, and it'll print out a little summary on all what's involved there. I just have to hit print, and it's all formatted and ready to go. There's a tab here, Illustration of Protocols, and this is what you see in the back of the Sire catalogs that do exactly what we just did, only it's diagrammed out. So I did a fixed time seven day cedar for the cows right here, and I did a fixed time seven day coasting cedar for my heifers. It's right here, that's what we did. And then finally, there's another page here, Tips and Overview, which just provides some notes and how to instructions, maybe a little explanation for what you see on the program. All right. So that's really what our program's all about. Um, you'll notice that there's colors on here. If things start to overlap, for instance, if two things happen at the same time, it'll red things out and uh, let you know that there's a conflict going on. And if it's if it's if the whole bar is colored, it'll be colored based on the system and the the group's color and Usually this means something got eliminated because there just was too many things on one day. If things get a little bit close together, it'll warn you with a little orange marker here. And it'll just, if it's, if it's in within two, three hours of each um, step, it'll just give you a little warning there. So that's what you'll see there. All right, I'll turn you loose and the program's all yours.